Today we install auto bed leveling on the Ender 3 V2. My name's Jim and this is the Edge of Tech. What's up everybody? Like I said, today we're gonna walk through the process of installing this TH3D Easy ABL auto bed leveling system on the Ender 3 V2. It's actually not that bad. I'm gonna walk you step by step through the process. We're gonna go through everything from getting the firmware to loading the firmware to installing the probe and configuring the probe. And then in the end, we run a test print. Now I really like my Ender 3 V2 and I've done other videos and you can find those right here on the Ender 3 V2, but I haven't done an auto bed leveling video and it's time to do that today. Let's go. I'm proud to say this video is sponsored by Thangs. Thangs is the fastest growing 3D community with over 2 million available models already. Thangs is a super responsive website and you can find a ton of really cool models on Thangs. Actually, if you go up to the search bar and type in mini gym, the Edge of Tech mini gym will pop up. You can download that and print it right at home yourself. Thank you so much, Thangs, for your sponsorship. Click the link in the description below. It'll take you straight to Thangs, and you can check them out from there. So what we want to do first is jump into firmware.th3dstudio.com, which actually brings us to this page. And if we scroll down, we see the Unified 2 firmware. A little bit further down, we find Creality. And then we can look for what printer we're going to use. In our case, we're going to do the Ender 3 V2. So we're gonna click on this one right here. This will be all the instruction we're gonna go through today, but we're gonna to try to make it a little bit faster and easier on the video here. So the first thing we wanna do is download the unified firmware, which is right here. So I'm just gonna click it and it's gonna download in the background. Something we talked about before and I wanna bring up again, you have to upgrade the screen first. It says that right here as well. So we're gonna go through that and then upgrade the board. I'm gonna show you how to put your SD card in, get it formatted for the firmware update for the screen, and then we're gonna use a second SD card for the firmware for the board itself. So it's gonna tell you that you always wanna update the screen first. Also, something you need to have is VS Code installed, and there's an installation guide right here, and it walks you through everything you need to know. VS Code is the program you're gonna open the configuration in and edit, and then it'll compile the firmware from there. So VS Code needs to be installed. That's right here, it's super simple. Also, it's down below in the instructions below. It'll tell you how to do that as well. For this video, I'm gonna assume that you guys have VS Code, or before you go any further, jump into that installation guide. The link will be in the description of the video, and We'll make it happen. Then what we wanna do is open up our area where we just downloaded the firmware. I've already downloaded it a couple times doing this video. Uh, we're gonna open up that firmware and right away you'll see something called LCD firmware. And this is for the Ender 3 V2. We're gonna click into it. Right away you'll see this LCD update. Right click and extract all. That'll say, you know, where do you wanna extract it? If you leave that default, it'll extract it right to this folder hit that extract button and you'll get this folder here. Now this specific folder, the dwin underscore set folder has to be put on a specially formatted SD card. And we're gonna do that right now. So you wanna take a micro SD card that came with the printer's fine and pop it into the computer. Now what we're gonna do is gonna delete the contents of this SD card. If you have anything on there that you wanna save, this is your time to save it off now. We have to format this card and it's gonna lose everything. So if you need to save everything off, you wanna do that right now. In this case, there's just a firmware and I'm not worried about it, so we're gonna keep rocking. I'm gonna go down here to where that volume is. It, in this case, it says it's new volume F. I'm going to right click and format. We format it with an allocation unit size of 4,096 bytes. It's very important that you do that. I've tried it other ways with hit or miss results and if I do it 4096, I have the best results. FAT32, 4096 bytes. We'll do a quick format and just hit start. There you go. Once it's done, it'll pop itself back up. We'll hit okay and we can close this. So now what we need to do is, this is our dwin underscore set folder. We're gonna right click the whole folder. We're gonna copy it. We're gonna go into that volume we just created and we're going to paste it. At this point, your screen firmware SD card is good to go. We wanna right click on that and eject. 
and now you're good to go with your screen firmware SD card. And we're gonna jump onto that in just a minute. What we need to do is open our VS program here and open our firmware. So we go to file, open a whole folder. Then you wanna go to wherever you downloaded your firmware. It's in downloads in my case. We're going to uh, double click. We're gonna to go to firmware and this is everything. So I'm gonna go back one. So you just want to go to downloads, open up your firmware, click on and highlight the folder called firmware. You don't have to go any further than that and just hit select folder. What that's gonna do is put it here in the left side. If you open up that left side and you come down here to Marlin and open that up, you'll find something called configuration.h. Now in configuration.h, this is where we actually configure our firmware. So when you first open this up, everything will be just like this, kind of green colored. What we need to do is figure out which printer we're gonna use the firmware for, and then go ahead and compile the firmware for that board. In my case, I have the Ender 3 V2, and I have a 422 board. So I'm gonna click right here. Um, we're gonna go backwards and uncomment those two wax out. So when you uncomment something out, you're just deleting the two wax like this. You're just gonna delete them out like that. You'll see it works. This will turn into like a pink and a blue color there. So in our case, I have the Ender 3 version 422 board. Uh, the best way to find out which board you have is to actually just open up the case and look at the board directly. I know mine is a 422 board because I've done that in the past. Uh, I don't remember if I showed that in the, the rest of this video, but I do know that you need to figure that out before you go any further. If you have a newer one, it's probably a 427 board, but you want to make sure, open up the control board, look inside at your board, and just make sure it says 422 or 427 on the board. Once you get this far, uncomment that out and in this case we're going to add that easy abl uh, to ours so i'm going to scroll down here a little bit further and you'll find right here easy abl probe mounts uh, i'm going to go down to the ender 3 v2 oem and just uncomment that out as well now if you do not have an easy abl then leave that commented in and you don't have to do anything else all we're going to do is compile if you do have an easy abl you want to uncomment this out like this. And then all you have to do is come down here to the checkbox, hit that button, and it'll start compiling your firmware. Depending on the speed of your computer, this can take maybe five, six, 10 minutes. Uh, you just, it really depends on how fast your computer is. I don't have a too bad of a computer. This only usually takes a couple minutes for me. So once it's done, you'll see right down here at the bottom of the screen that it was a success and we need to go find that firmware to put it on an SD card. Uh, to find the firmware we just compiled, go up to the left side here, you can minimize that Marlin uh, folder there, and you wanna drop down the PIO folder right here. You wanna click into builds, and then you'll see this one right here, which is STM32 whatever. Uh, you wanna right click that and reveal in Explorer. That'll bring up your file explorer here, with the location that it saved your firmware in. You wanna double click on it, and chances are if this is the first time you've done this, you'll only have one, but we're looking for a .bin firmware. The one we just did is actually this one right here. It, chances are if you haven't done this a bunch like me, you'll only have one in there. So you wanna right click this bin folder here, make sure it's the correct one if you have multiple. Hit copy. You want to plug in a new SD card and paste it right onto the card. And that's just like I showed you with the other one, with the exception of you don't have to format it in 4096 bytes. It can be anything. Actually, you could do the screen and then pop the SD card back in and put this firmware on it and then do the board if you really wanted to, if you only have one SD card. But uh, all you have to do is copy, put this actual bin folder right directly on that SD card and then eject your SD card and pull it out and that's it. Now what we do is go from here to the printer and we're gonna show you how to get started on installing the screen and the board firmware on the printer. Let's do it. Now it's time to upgrade the firmware on the screen. We have to do that first. So with the printer unplugged and off, we're gonna pop up the screen and we're gonna flip it around like this. We're gonna pull the little cable out just like that. And we need to take these four bolts out right here. So once we got it flipped over, we got the cable out, we're gonna grab our Allen wrench and we're gonna take these out. 
Now I'm using the TH3D uh, toolkit that they sell. It is on sale now for like $12.99 at the time of this, but um, you can use the Allen wrench that came with the kit as well. This is just a 2.5 bit, I believe. Once you get it off and your bolts are out, go ahead and pop off that back. You might have to take a small flathead and, and pop up one side, but it will come out. So what we're gonna do next is take a SD card and it goes in this slot right here. I'm gonna zoom in and show you that when we put it in there. But there's just a metal piece right here, that's where your SD card goes. And it's gonna slide in right here. So once you have the back off, grab your SD card and it's gonna go in this slot like we talked about. You push it in until it springs, just like that, it locks in. And now what we need to do is plug it into the printer. Once your SD card is in, you wanna plug in your cable, your ribbon cable right here. Then you wanna spin the screen around so you see it like that. And we're gonna turn on the printer. So when we turn it on, it should go from black to orange. And once we should see orange here in a second. All right, there's blue. Blue's good. There's orange, okay. So after about 30 seconds of orange, I want to give it a minute, but after the 30 seconds of orange, you can turn your printer back off and then go to the next step. So it's been about one minute. I'm going to flip the printer off. It'll turn off. I need to take the SD card out. So we'll press the button and eject it and pull that SD card out. And then before I put anything back together, I'm gonna spin the screen around one more time and just fire the printer back on to make sure it all worked. So I'll turn the printer back on and on the screen, now we have TH3D Marlin. That's how you know this works. It'll have that TH3D and the Marlin splash screen. So now our screen is ready. So before we upgrade the printer, turn the printer off, flip the screen back over, take the ribbon cable out and install your back panel back on with those four screws. Then put your ribbon cable back on, slide the screen back on the mount like it came off, and then we'll move on to upgrading the printer. Now to update the machine firmware, we just take our SD card and we stick it in. We got the SD card in, I turned the 3D printer on, and now we should see it go from black to the splash screen here. And then once it's complete, as you see, there we go, it'll go to the main screen. Once it all loads up, so you wanna scroll over to control, scroll down to info, then look at the firmware line here that says TH3D Unified Firmware 2.27. Now in this case, at the time of the filming, this is the newest one, 2.27. In your case, it could be much newer. I know Tim's working on a new release now, so that'll change shortly. But right now it's 2.27, we are good to go. So what we need to do now after we load a new firmware is restore the EEPROM. And we can do that from the control panel, I believe, by going to control, Scroll down to restore defaults and hit that button. Now that should have reset your EEPROM. Just like that, you hear the button and we should be good to go now. If not, I'm gonna put in the description below the Marlin commands if you wanna hook it up to a computer and use uh, Octoprint or anything like that to connect. I'll give you the Marlin commands to reset your EEPROM from there as well. But in this case, I went to restore defaults Hit that button and we should be golden. And that's it, that's all we have to do to do the firmware on the Ender 3 V2, including the screen. All right, to get started installing the Easy ABL on the Ender 3 V2, what we need to do is start with these parts. Now this here is the Easy ABL. It comes with zip ties, a little screwdriver. Uh, I actually printed the mount here, but you can order one from them. That looks like this one right here, but I actually wanted to go blue today, so I printed this one in an HP PLA. Also, it comes with a box and some wire. And for this build, I'm actually gonna go the super easy way, and I actually bought the power plug for it. Now, you can use the included wire and wire this right to your power supply, and that's a pretty easy thing to do. But in this case, I'm actually gonna show you the easiest thing to do, and that's just use this power adapter once we get it plugged in. It makes it very simple. The only downside to it is that you need this extra power plugged in at all times with your printer. Other than that, it makes this install very, very easy. You don't even have to open the control board to do it. Let's get this going. We're gonna start by installing our mount. So to get this started, what we wanna do is get this bolt out right here. Now this is the bolt that holds the wheel on. So what we need to do is 
grab, and yes, I started loosening it already, but we need to grab the back of this with a pliers, then we need to take that out. So I'm gonna use this here, squeeze the back of it, and I already broke it loose, so I'm going to use the long side of my Allen wrench, and we're gonna take this screw out. Now, it's very important that you be careful with this and watch. Now, it's very important that you be careful with this. Jeez. Okay, so once you have the back grabbed with your pliers, unscrew the front and be very careful because once it gets to the end, your bolt is gonna fall out. Like that. So I take the bolt, or take my nut and I'm gonna put it down by the table and then I'm gonna grab my bolt and pull it out just like this. Now there is a spacer back here that's hard to see. There is a spacer back here that you need to remember to put back in as well. To put it all back together, grab your bracket and push your bolt through there. We're gonna push it through the hole just a little bit. We're gonna take the spacer that came out of the back and push that in. Then the wheel, push the wheel in. Then your lock nut. And we're gonna start the lock nut here. Once we get that started, I'm going to grab it with the pliers like we did be before. And I'm gonna use the long side of my Allen wrench to get it tightened here. You might need to keep that down. And I'm just gonna tighten this in but you don't want to make you want to make sure it's not too tight so this flops around. But you also don't want your wheel uh, too tight as well. So once you get it on there, just check your wheel, make sure you're not uh, overly tight. That's perfect. It works. Now if you push this up, it probably will move up. That means I probably could go a little bit tighter. So I'm gonna I'm gonna grab the long side. I'm using the long side because I don't want to over tighten. So I'm gonna clamp that down there. I'm gonna hold this in place. There we go. So now let's check, not too tight. And this is much better, it's not moving. That's what we wanna see. Now it's time to put our easy ABL on. What we need to do is take off this bottom nut here, like that. And then we need to actually screw this way up because it needs to go a good distance to the bottom here. It should only, it should be about two millimeters above your nozzle if I remember right. What we wanna do is screw it way up so we can stick it through like this. And it's probably even gonna come farther than that. So I'm gonna leave it about right there. I like to go a little bit further up here and then adjust it down if I have to. We are pretty close right there. We'll give it a couple more threads just because. So I'm gonna take this nut and thread it on just enough for the bottom of the Easy AVL to be out but I don't wanna to go too far on. And I'm gonna leave it just like that. Now what we need to do is just run the cabling. Now what we have is this loop here of cable. I'm untwisting the cable ties and taking them off quick. And now it's time to start installing our cable here. So the first thing we wanna do is create a loop. And we wanna create this loop here so this never gets snagged. And it says that right in the manual, but you wanna create this loop here so it never strains this area up here. Once you get your loop created, then use your first zip tie. And I like to go around the cabling, not around the Bowden tube there. And I'm just gonna zip tie it to the cabling. Now, you could splice into the cable uh, management here if you really want to. I'm not gonna do that, but you can if you want to. So once we have our nice little loop here and we got our first cable tie on here, then we just wanna run this back and down the side of the cable management here so it's nicely cable tied and it doesn't get in the way. So I'm gonna put probably two or three more zip ties and just run it along this cable management here, along the back, and I'll be right back. Now we have our zip ties along here. I did not zip tie around the Bowden tube. Uh, that was the one that was already there. But you can see the ones I did are sticking out. I'm gonna grab my flush cutters and just cut these off so they're nice and flush and look nice and they don't cut anybody. They don't get hung up on anything. Once all those are cut off and look good, 
we're gonna move on to the control box. Hey everybody, if you're getting value out of the video today, please do me a favor, hit that like button right now. I really appreciate it, and it really helps the video get pushed further throughout the community on YouTube. Thanks again, and now back to it. So I'm on the side of the printer now. This is our ZN stop right here. I'm just gonna unplug that right here, and I'm gonna grab our Allen wrench, and we are gonna take the ZN stop off. We will no longer need the ZN stop now. I'm gonna using the Allen wrench that came with the kit. Once it's loose, I'm just gonna spin it off with both of those screws. Now there is T-nuts and we're gonna use the T-nuts going forward. So don't forget to get the T-nut out, there we go. Now once you have your Z end stop off right here, you wanna take the bolts out and the T-nuts and set your Z end stop aside. Take the control box next and open it up. And this is our Z end stop wire and that's gonna plug directly into the control box down there. Super easy. So you're gonna plug that in carefully and push it in so it's nice and tight in there. Then you're gonna route that out the side and this is gonna tell you about where you can mount this. Now you can mount it forward if you want. I'm gonna mount mine about right there. I think that'll be perfect and nicely mounted on the side of the machine. So to mount it, you can see there's three holes right here. Pick the hole that uh, suits you. I'm gonna do it in the top one so it's nice and flush like this. Grab the mounting hardware that came from your Z end stop and you might have to thread it in, but that's okay. So thread it into the case there. Do that for the front and the back. And then we are gonna use the T-nuts that it came with to lock it into the side rail right here. So let me get this threaded, let me get the T-nuts on, and I'll be right back. So I got them threaded, I got the T-nuts on like this, I'm gonna turn them both kind of sideways there, and I'm gonna pop them into the extrusion where I want them. Now you can mount this anywhere you want. Remember this cable has to be able to come out like this, because there's a cover that goes on here, so you make sure the cable comes out of the little hole there. But I'm gonna go about right there, I'm gonna use my Allen wrench and just Spin it in so those T-nuts lock in. And then I'm gonna do that for both sides. Lock these things in with the T-nuts. Once it's locked in, I'll uh, go on to the next step. Now we have it mounted here. Our Z end stop is right here and it's gonna go, there's a little groove that that's gonna sit in really nicely. Now the next thing I wanna do is plug in my easy ABL cord that comes with it. And that really just plugs in just like that. Now this is good to go here. I'm not gonna put the cover on, and I'm gonna show you why in a little bit here, but don't put the cover on yet. The only thing we have to do now is power this thing up. Now you can use, like I mentioned earlier, this wire right here. You can run it from here down into this hole and straight to your power supply, uh, and it'll run it perfectly. In this case, I wanted to show an even easier way, so I'm gonna use this power supply here. All we're gonna do when we're ready is plug it into the top, we're gonna plug this into the wall, and that's it. At this point, we can move on to adjusting the Easy ABL. So as you notice, I actually grabbed the wrong mount. I printed this blue one I wanted to use, and I accidentally put the black one on in the heat of the moment fi filming this video. So I'm probably gonna swap that out, but we don't have to do that right now. Now what we wanna do is lower our gantry. Uh, so we're gonna do that now. We're just gonna do this and lower the gantry down. I'm gonna push my bed back and kind of move this over here to the center, like that. And I'm gonna come pretty close. Now I'm gonna take a wrench that came with the Creality Kit and I'm gonna set it right down like this. And then I'm gonna lower the gantry down just so the nozzle just touches the bed. So it's gonna be hard to see the nozzle underneath there, but the wrench is gonna be underneath the Easy ABL just like that. And I'm just gonna slowly bring this down just until the nozzle touches the bed, right there. So that's where we want our Easy ABL to sit. Now this needs to sit flush on here, so I actually need to come down a little bit on our mount. So I'm just gonna loosen that up and let it sit just like that. And I'm gonna make it sure it's sitting kind of flat. So once it is flat on the wrench like this, that should be about right. Now let's bring this up and we're gonna tighten this bottom one in 
so it doesn't move anymore. We really got to bring that up quite far. So when I'm in here like that, I'm going to bring this ring up all the way to about the bottom until I can hold it with two hands here. So then what you want to do is make sure you're sitting flush and you want to make sure it's straight and flush down here. It can't be crooked or anything like that. It needs to be perfectly straight up and down. Then you want to bring your bottom nut up to about right there, about three threads over. Then screw your top nut down. So it's about right there. So the top nut is up against our mount here. Then I'm going to hold and I'm going to screw this bottom one in and tighten them. Kind of hard to see. So if you did this right, they'll be, it'll be sitting flush on this wrench. There'll be no wiggle room here. I mean, I can lift it up physically if I really pull on it, but no one's going to be pulling on that while the machine's working. And that'll be about perfect right there. Now I'm going to spin mine just a little to keep that loop intact up the top there, just like that. So we have our sensor just touching and we're going to go on to the next step. Now what we're going to do is take our power adapter, plug it into the Easy ABL, and then I'm going to plug it into my power, just like that. Now, the little light came on here and I know that there's power to the Easy ABL. So I'm going to fire the machine on here. I'm going to raise this up a little bit. I'm going to turn the machine on. Now the machine's on and I'm going to put my wrench underneath the nozzle like that. I'm going to go to prepare, disable stepper, and we're going to slowly bring the nozzle down until it hits that wrench very, very, very slightly. So it just touches the wrench. Now we need to adjust our easy ABL. There's a red light on right now and there's a little screw hole right in the side here. If I put my uh, little screwdriver that came with it in there and I'm going to unscrew it until it turns green. So the red light went off. In this case, there's no green light. So the red light went off and I'm going to slightly screw it now just a little bit till the light comes on. Then I'm going to back it off just a hair and just, just enough where that light comes on. And this is very, very small turns. I mean like just barely turning it. All right. So I'm confident that I have now set the AZ ABL. You see the, the red light is on now here, and that's going to trigger at about four millimeters above the bed. Oh, I was wrong. There's actually a green light on this side. I apologize. I didn't see that, but I thought there was a green light. But then I was standing on this side and didn't see it. So there's actually a green light right here, which is kind of hard to see from this camera angle and a red light here. So now if I pull our wrench out and I bring this down, You'll see it trigger there and stop triggering here. So we should be calibrated right about there. The next thing we need to do is bring this up and make sure it's going to home correctly. So I'm going to bring this up quite a bit here and we'll be right back. Now we got everything up off the bed just in case we don't want to crash anywhere. We need to auto home and make sure that this triggers the correct direction. So I'm going to go to uh, prepare auto home and it's going to raise a little it's going to go to the side it's going to stop and then what i'm going to do is just put my finger here and it's not stopping so that is not a good sign i'm going to shut the printer off and i'm going to show you how we fix that okay so it turns out i just had a loose wire in this case if i go to prepare auto home you'll see everything move it'll come towards us then it'll go away and if you stick your finger under, it'll stop just like that. That's what you want to see. Now, if it is backwards, if it is doing this, so if you go to auto home, it auto homes like this and it homes and it doesn't stop like that. There's a little black switch that you have to flip. And let me show you that now. So if it's not triggering or if it's going up, it's triggering backwards, flip that little black switch. In my case, I just had my Z wasn't pushed in all the way, but if 
it's not triggering, flip that switch and you should be good. Now we're gonna auto home again and make sure, and then we're on to the next step. So here we go, we'll go to prepare, auto home, it'll do its thing. We just wanna make sure we're triggering on that Z, you don't want it to crash. So, that's perfect. Now I'm gonna let it go all the way down and just make sure everything's good. We know it's not gonna crash into the bed, which is great. And then right after this, we're gonna set our Z offset and then we're done. Perfect. Now that we know we're good there, I'm gonna take my case and put the cover on it. So make sure your wire is down in that little opening Lock it closed and you're good to go. Then we have these cables to worry about. What you wanna do is raise your gantry all the way up when we're ready. Uh, make sure that this can reach everything. And then I'm gonna just gonna take some cable ties and tie that up. But I wanna make sure when we're done, I can raise this all the way up and it's gonna reach. We don't want this being too tight and being pulled. So we'll do that at the end, not a big deal. I'm just gonna tell you to do it now. Uh, like I said, grab a couple zip ties, raise your gantry all the way up and just make sure you zip tie this when the gantry's all the way up so this is as far as it needs to stretch. So the next thing we need to do is set the Z offset. And to do that, I'm gonna try to show you the screen and then you can kind of see the printer here in the side view. Uh, but what we wanna do is go to prepare here, which is the second box, scroll down to auto home and let the printer auto home itself real quick. So this only takes a, a couple seconds here. It's pretty fast and it is already auto homed right there. Then if we go back here um, and then go to prepare, move, and right here under move Z, it's kind of hard to see, but that says 5.0. What we need to do is click on that and bring it back down to zero. So move Z should be zero where it's highlighted right here. Then hit the button and the printer will drop down to that point. Now we're gonna go back, then we're gonna go set to the Z offset right here. So I'm gonna throw a piece of paper under here so you guys can see that. And what we're gonna do is just dial this down till the paper starts grabbing on the hot end here. And dialing it down will be turning it counterclockwise like this. And it should be somewhere right around two millimeters. So two millimeters for me is just a little bit high. 2.05, 2.07 is grabbing pretty nicely right there. 2.10 is too much. And so you can really see just how much of a fine tune you can do on this. So I'm gonna do 2.06, which is right there. I think that's a really nice Grab, actually, I think I'm gonna settle on 2.08 right there. So then you're gonna hit the button. Once you hit the button, it'll lock in your Z offset of negative 2.08 in my case. It's a nice grab on that paper. You wanna to go to back, control, and then scroll down to store settings. It should make a beep sound just like that. Then let's go back. Let's go prepare, auto home again. Let the printer home itself. And it's homed itself. Then we're gonna go up here to move one more time. Go to move Z and it's set at five again, 5.0. But now if we take our paper and we put it underneath here, and we click on move and we bring that back down to zero. We should, oh, we gotta hit the button. Now you should be right where you were when we left off at that negative 2.08. So that'll tell us when the move Z is at zero and this is grabbing your paper now, your Z offset is now set you're ready to print. All right, so the last thing I wanna do is show you how it should react when you have the Easy ABL on. It does the bed leveling. And then once it's going, I wanna show you that live Z adjust. So I actually sliced a test 
for this bed and it came from the TH3D firmware files. I'm just gonna print it and we're gonna let it go here. If everything is right, it should do a home and then it should probe the bed and once it starts printing, we'll be back. Okay, so it's gonna come down now. It's gonna do a purge line and then it's gonna start the outside. So it's purging now. You can see a little bit of filament was on there like that. And once it starts, on the menu here, you have a tune button. So if you press tune, and you scroll down to Z offset or baby step, it should say 2.08 and that's the baby step or the Z offset we gave it already. Now, if you look at your print and just see how it's going, you can move it up or down and this looks like it's pretty good so far, but you can move it up or down by clicking that and turning clockwise here, we'll move it up. Turning counterclockwise, we'll move it down and you can maybe dial in your Z offset a little better while it's printing. Now don't forget if you do make a change, you have to click the button to actually make that change. So if you turn it up or turn it down, you have to click the button before the printer will actually move. In a second here, uh, we're gonna do one more loop and then we're gonna do a squares and we're gonna see how that goes. I'm probably gonna put this in time-lapse mode again so we can speed it up a little bit, but in a second you're gonna see the squares being printed and then we'll check the squares out in the end. But this is a very important step just to dial in your Z offset, make sure your baby stepping is good. And don't forget you can do this on any print that you start. So in my case, uh, this was already a leveled bed. I had this leveled before, but you always want to make sure your bed is level no matter what, if you're using ABL or not. If you want to, you could do solid mounts, is which, and that's what I'm going to be swapping this to. So then you put them in, you screw your uh, wheels up, and you don't have to worry about leveling your bed again. But in this case, I have wheels. I made sure we were leveled before we started. Something else to throw in there. So right now it's going to do the TH3D logo in the center. It's going to go around and do some outsides and then fill them in. We're gonna jump in the time-lapse and we'll be back when it's done. All right, as you can see, it printed the logo in the center and four test squares here, along with the two outlines of the skirt. And I think it went well. I think uh, I probably need to adjust it a little bit in the center here. It's a little bit tight, it's dragging right here, um, but, and maybe a hair right here, which tells me maybe my bed's not uh, level to start with, but those solid mounts will definitely help with this. Uh, again, you need to level your bed normally before you start any of this, and make sure you have good tension on your spring so it won't change. Uh, then the probe will be much better and more accurate. Otherwise, grab some solid mounts, throw them under there, and then you won't have to level anymore. But in this case, this is definitely not bad. It's all here. It looks pretty nice, mostly through here, maybe a little dragging through the center, which tells me this is probably raised a little bit in the center here. Uh, other than that, test print looks great, and that's it. We are completely done installing the Easy ABL on the Ender 3 V2 and testing it with a test pattern. Well, that's it. We've successfully installed the TH3D Easy ABL and new firmware on this Ender 3 V2. It actually wasn't too bad. In reality, it probably only takes maybe 20 minutes to 30 minutes. It's not bad at all, especially if you use the fast way we use today. What I mean by that is there's two ways to wire your Easy ABL. There's a direct wire kit, which they give you the wires for, and you can wire it straight to your power supply. That is normally how I do it. But for this video, I actually use the power adapter. Using this power adapter, you don't have to open the control panel, you don't have to open any wires, you don't have to cut any wires, all you do is plug your ZN stop into it, you plug your sensor into it, and you plug this into it and into an outlet. And that's it. There's no opening anything else. And this is the simplest method of installing the Easy ABL. Now the only downfall I found with this is that you have two plugs now to power up. You need this one plugged in to the control box, and then you need your power plugged into the wall as well for the printer. 
Now when you unplug or you turn off your printer, you're probably gonna wanna unplug this as well. Maybe just throw it on a power strip, flip the toggle on your power strip and call it a day. The next thing I wanna bring up is the starting G code. The starting G code will need to be changed when you put any auto bed leveling on a printer. In the description below, you'll find a link and you can go there and you can find the starting and ending G code for the Ender 3 V2 that I use with my ABL. Also, I reached out to Tim and he said I could use this test pattern. So I sliced it for you guys in Prusa Slicer and specifically for the Ender 3 V2, if you're gonna use it for that, like this video is intended, check out the same link in the description and you can find an already sliced G code file. All you have to do is throw it on your SD card pop it in your printer and hit print. And it'll give you this print that we did on the video today. At this point, let me know in the description below. Do you guys use ABL? Do you want to use ABL? Have you ever installed ABL? Let me know below. Do you use an easy ABL or BL Touch? That'd be interesting too. I'll be watching the comments. I'm always curious what you guys are using and if you've installed it as well. Overall, I really like the Easy ABL. I have it on a few machines. You've probably seen a couple videos in the past where we've installed it as well. Uh, I personally like it better than the BL Touch. That's my personal preference, but uh, I really think it performs well. It installs very easy like you saw today. And I, I just think it's a very, very good product and it supports a small business. If you're looking for an easy ABL, there'll be a link in the description below where you can go and find the kit. You can find the solid bed mounts if you wanna throw those on there. And also there'll be a discount code TEOT5 that runs until August of 2021 that you can throw in in your cart and get 5% discount and it helps the channel out too because that's an affiliate code. So check that all out, it's in the description below. I really hope you guys learned something today and as always, keep printing. Hey everybody, if you liked that video, give me the thumbs up, hit the subscribe button right here and click the little bell right over here if you wanna get notified anytime we put out a great video or go live. I really appreciate it, you guys rock.